Hello everyone, this is an Asus X541SA. It is a very popular and very cheap computer. I see quite a few of these types of cheap Asus machines from the Windows 8 era. At least I believe it's from the Windows 8 era. Eh, it could have come with Windows 10, I don't remember. But anyway, it doesn't matter. This is a cheap Celeron machine. So, adding this SSD to it today is probably not going to speed it up too much, but it does remove one major bottleneck. So, as is often common procedure on my channel when we do computer repair videos, you just take all the screws out of the computer. That's the very first thing you do for all of these. Now, this one might have different length screws, so pay attention to that. Uh, you can find all the screws here, 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 here. There's one missing here, here, and there's four in the front. And then you'll have to pry it open. Uh, as usual, I will probably just fast forward through all of this, so you don't have to watch me sit here and take screws out. Screws out! Now, this is where it gets ugly with these computers. You have to open it and probably pivot it up a bit. So what we need to do is get a pry tool. These pry tools here are often marketed as clay modeling tools, though you'll never get the camera to focus on it. Come on, look at, look at my beautiful pry tool. There it is. See that nice round edge? That's what we're going to use. It's soft metal. I get a lot of garbage in the comments for using them, but I kind of don't care either. Focus. Now, put it in the seam, right here, in the seam, get it in, and then the trick is to pry this way so that you're pushing the lip here away, pulling it away, Oh, the camera does not like what I'm doing. Oh, you don't know where to focus, do you? That's okay. Pry and pry and pry and pry. All day long. Pry up and down, pry left and right. Pry, pry, pry. All right. Now, so... Uh, let's get in here, boys. And it looks like the keyboard is actually so short it already yanked out of its own connector. The mouse touchpad also has yanked out. Nah, not quite. There we go. Nah, there it is. See KB and TP there? That's what you need to yank. This one and this one. And that gets you in. Now we're in. Congratulations to me. I'm going to set it back here out of my way. All right, let's do a quick overview of what we have in here. First of all, we have dirt. This thing's full of dirt, and we're gonna have to blow it out. So, we have a hard drive here that needs replacement. We have this Wi-Fi card here, soldered RAM that cannot be replaced, and this is your cooling assembly, which is probably full of dirt. So before I put this back together, I'm probably gonna blow it out, although I don't strictly have to. We just need to swap this drive out, but, you know, while you have it open, it's not a bad idea to look at cleaning other things. So, screw here for the hard drive, caddy. There we go. And there aren't any other screws holding it in. There is a little handle here, actually, but uh, it's very hard to get it to slide out since it's been there for years. All right, what are we replacing in here? A 500 gig drive, that's pretty typical. You see 500 gigabyte hard drives in a lot of these cheap computers. Reason being, um, when they got to 500 gig per platter technology in laptop drives, um, that's kind of the cheapest you can do. That's why you stopped seeing sizes like 250 and 320 being sold in traditional mechanical hard drives because the baseline became 500 gigabytes. So it didn't make much sense to offer anything in increments lower than that because they would have had to go back to inferior processes. Now, four screws holding the hard drive in and I have unscrewed them, but the drive is still stuck. This is because the geniuses who built this thing put this sticky layer around everything and I can't just pull it out. So. 
we have a few options. We could cut it with a knife. We could peel it like this. And given the age of this, I can probably just peel this shielding layer that isn't strictly necessary in the first place and get it to, yep, there it goes. Oh, bent the caddy and everything too, thanks guys. Yep, there we go. Harvested the drive. Let's see if we can just pull it away. Yep, there we go. Okay, we have liberated the hard drive from the chains that bind it. It went in there and the data side is here. So we need to put it back in this way where the short end of the SATA connector goes there. So four screws to go back into the new solid state drive. There we go. One fresh solid state hard drive. Boom. Put your screw back here in this hole. There you go. And again, the Wi-Fi card's here, and it looks like it only has one antenna, too. So this, I'm not sure, but it might need to be blown out. Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll blow that out. Anyway, um, reassembly is the reverse of disassembly. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's a very simple system. Real quick, let's look at this. The keyboard is held in directly with plastic welds. If you ever got this keyboard out of this plastic, you'd probably destroy the plastic in the process. Also, there's this metal thing, which is holding one end of the keyboard in. Very frustrating. So you kind of have to just replace this whole thing if you want to swap the keyboard. The touchpad appears to just be held in with some screws, uh, except for that end, which is also kind of welded down. So if you have problems with the touchpad or keyboard, you probably just get a whole new assembly. And there you go. So this goes down here, and you have this short keyboard cable and long touchpad cable. You need to put the touchpad cable in first because it's longer, but the keyboard cable, and I, I can't close this all the way because I still have to show you a few things here, but the keyboard cable, let's... The keyboard cable's tough, so you have to get it in there somehow all right and this it turns out this is actually so bad so short that what you're gonna have to do is slide this over get this cable here in there come on don't be this difficult please do not be so difficult get the keyboard cable in there and once you've got it lined up this is pretty dicey. Close that connector down. And then you can do the touchpad connector a little bit more freely, I believe. It's under the keyboard cable, so you can't even see what I'm doing. But the touchpad cable is a lot easier to get in that slot. So get it in that slot there. Come on. And lock it down. There you go. And I know that might not have been entirely in focus, but there you go one very short keyboard cable and one not quite a short touchpad cable neither of which are ideal alright from there pivot put it back together and that's the end of that thanks for watching like comment subscribe you can also donate to me to fund me making more computer repair videos with links in the description have a nice day